All right, welcome back everybody. Today we are gonna be talking about standard GQ3. And again, GQ stands for graphing quadratics, right? So we're graphing these parabolas. Now what we're gonna change on this one is, on this lesson, we're gonna stop talking about tables. We're gonna to try to do this without the need for tables. Now, looking at our first graph over here, we're just gonna identify some of those main features that we were looking at earlier. So in this one, remember, our y-intercept is always just this number. So we can always write our y-intercept two different ways. We either just write it as the number or we can write it as the point. You really wanna be pre prepared to be able to do that both ways. So zero, three, or just three is perfectly fine. Now, the vertex always requires a little bit of work. The way you're gonna find the vertex is by using our formula, negative b over two a. Remember, this is our a value, right? So our a here is one our b is negative 10, and our c value is a positive three. To find the y-intercept, we're gonna first start by using this formula. So negative, now I'm gonna have a negative 10, because that's what b is, divided by two times our a value, which is one. Now coming over here, we're gonna have a negative negative 10, which is a positive 10, over two, which means we get five. Now the thing to remember about five is that five is just the x value of our vertex. In order to find the y value of our vertex, we need to take whatever our answer is here and plug it back into our original function. So I'm gonna have one times five squared minus 10 times five plus three. Now coming over here, I'm gonna have my five squared, which is, well, actually let's just use our calculator. So pulling in our calculator, we're gonna have one times five to the second power minus 10 times five plus three. And I get negative 22. So I get five and negative 22 for my vertex, right? Because whatever number comes out when I plug in that X coordinate has to be my vertex. Now the last part of this is new, and that's to tell whether our graph is concave up or concave down. And it's actually really easy to identify that. All we need to do is look at our A value. In this one, our A value is a positive one. Anytime that our A value is positive, we can automatically tell that our graph is gonna be opening up. If A is negative, that means our graph is gonna be opening up downwards. So looking at all of our other problems, look at this one, number two. This is the only one that I see that will have a negative A value, it would be a negative one. So a free answer for you is that this one is gonna be opening down because of the fact this is negative, right? So there is a free answer for you. Now, coming over here to problem three, let's do the same thing. So our y-intercept, remember, is seven, and we should write it our two ways, or zero comma seven. Just that easy, it's whatever that last number is. Now our vertex is gonna take a little bit of work. So we use our formula, negative b over two a. Our b value up here is a negative one. So I'm gonna have a negative, negative one over two, and our a value is one half. Now, of course, when we simplify this, a negative negative one is gonna be a positive one. And two times one half, well, if you don't know this, you can always use a calculator, so two times, if you're gonna do this, use parentheses, we get one. One over one is one. Now, here's the thing to remember. This is the x coordinate of your vertex. So coming over here, one is going to be the x coordinate because of what we saw there. Now, in order to get the y coordinate, you need to take whatever that x coordinate is and you need to plug it in. So plugging it into our original, right? Our original was one half and then it's x squared. So I'm gonna put a one where the x was, minus one times one, I'm putting a one where the x was again, and then I'm gonna say plus seven. And now let's just use our calculator to do the heavy lifting for us. So I'm gonna put one half in parentheses here because it's a fraction. That's like the extra parentheses you have to add sometimes. And then everything else I'm gonna keep exactly the same. So minus one times one plus seven. And when we do that, we end up getting 6.5. Now, your vertex does not always need to land on a nice point. It is very possible that it might not be a nice point. So 6.5, we move on, we're done. Now the last part is concavity. Remember, to check your concavity, all you need to do is look at whatever your A value is. If your A is positive, which this is, that means we are going to be concave up. All right, 
So now let's get to graphing these. But we're going to try to do this without using a table. So looking at problem number five, first thing we are being asked to identify is A, B, and C. So A is 1, B is negative 10, and C is 21. Now our concavity, since this is positive, is going to be up, and our y-intercept is going to be 21 or 0, 21. There are just two ways to say the same thing. Now our line of symmetry, this really has to do with our vertex. We need our vertex in order to figure out our line of symmetry. So let's get our vertex. Remember, if you want to find the vertex, negative b over 2a is the formula you need to use. So our b value was a negative 10, so I'm going to have a negative negative 10. Our a value was 1. So simplifying this, negative negative 10 would be a positive 10 over 2, which is 5. This is the x-coordinate of your vertex. To get the y-coordinate of our vertex, what you are going to need to do is plug 5 into the original function. So writing down the original function, 1x squared minus 10x plus 21. We're going to take 5 and we're going to plug it in here and here because we have two x's. So 1 times 5 squared minus 10 times 5 plus 21. Again, let's let our calculator do the heavy lifting. So 1 times 5 to the second power minus 10 times 5 plus 21 gives us a negative 4. That negative 4 is the y-coordinate of your vertex. Now the reason why we like to find the vertex before we find the line of symmetry is because the line of symmetry depends on the vertex. Remember, for the line of symmetry, it's always going to be x equals a number. And the fact is, whatever this x-coordinate ends up being of your vertex is what x needs to equal here. So since that was 5, this is 5. Now looking down here, this also wanted us to factor. So looking at our original, if possible, it says not everything's factorable. So if I had 1x squared minus 10x plus 21, and you were being asked to factor that, then you would want to use your x method. So 1 times 21 puts a 21 up top. Negative 10 goes on the bottom. We'll have a 1x here and a 1x here because this is 1. Two numbers that multiply to be 21 that add to give us um, a negative 10 would be a negative 7 and a negative 3. So my factored form will be x minus 7 and x minus 3. Now, whenever, so let's just come over here, x minus 7, x minus 3. We factored it. Great. Now, to find our zeros, what we do is we set this equal to 0, and then we solve. So we're going to get x minus 7 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. And hopefully, pretty quickly, we figure out x equals 7, and x equals 3. So those are going to be our roots. So 7, 0 is a root, and 3, 0 is a root. Those are our x-intercepts. Those are those points. Now, the last part asks for any additional points, and at this point, let's just hold tight on that, okay? We'll see if we need to come back and enter any points in. Now, to graph this, right, we can start with knowing where our vertex is. 5, negative 4, 5, negative 4 means our vertex will be sitting right here. Our axis of symmetry was x equals negative 5, which is this vertical line there. Now, here's what we do know. We do know a little bit about our roots. So we know that we had roots at 7, 0, and at 3, 0. So we can come over here. Once we get one root, we can graph the other one as well. And notice how they're both two away from that center line because it's symmetrical. Now coming over here, this is actually all we need to graph. Our y-intercept doesn't fit on the graph because 21 would be like way up here. So this is actually plenty. We can come over here, graph, and graph, and we're done. Now if you were being asked to find any other point, you can literally just pick a number. I recommend picking a number that's close to where your vertex is, right? So I could, for example, just pick 6 if I wanted to, and I could plug that in for x. And if I put a 6 here, right, and a 6 here, it's going to spit out the y value that goes with 6, which will be right about where it belongs on my graph. Let's look at another problem. So I'll do problem number 7 here. 
Looks like I maybe will do two more for you and then I'll leave the rest to you. Now in this one, notice how our B term is missing, so we're going to put a zero there to hold that spot. So A, B, and C. Our A value is positive, so we know this is concave up. Our C value is what our Y intercept is, so we'll say negative 49. And remember, we like to write that two ways, so it's zero comma negative 49. Now in order to find our line of symmetry, we first need to find the vertex. So we're going to do negative B over 2A. Now B is 0, so I'll have a negative 0 over 2 times 4. Negative 0 over 8 is 0 divided by 8 is in fact 0. So that is the X coordinate of our vertex. To find the Y coordinate, you want to take that 0 and plug it into the original. So I'm going to have 4 X squared minus 49. I'm going to put 0 where the x is. So 4 times 0 squared minus 49. 0 squared is, of course, 0. 0 times 4 will also be 0. So 0 minus 49 means we get a negative 49 up. Now, we can use what we know to figure out our line of symmetry. So I'm going to have x. Remember, our line of symmetry is always x equals, so x equals zero because that's what that was for a vertex. Now for our factored form, our factoring of this actually looks a little unique, but we can do it. One thing to notice is that these are both perfect squares. So this is a special kind of problem when this happens. Remember, the way we actually factor something like this is if this four is a perfect square because we know the square root of it is two, and 49 is a perfect square because the square root of 49 is seven, we can factor this into be 2x minus 7 and 2x plus 7 to give us those points. That will be our factored form. Notice how the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 49 is 7. Right? That's how we get the 2 and the 7. And we just always make one positive and the other one negative. So I'm going to get 2x minus 7 and 2x plus 7. Now to find the roots, you want to use the factored form here, or you would be going through and doing the quadratic if it wasn't factorable. So coming over here, I'm going to take my factored form, 2x minus 7, and say equals 0, right? That was one of my factors here. And then I'm going to take my other factor, 2x plus 7 equals 0, and then we're going to solve. So to solve this, of course we want to add 7 and add 7. We get 2x is equal to 7, divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to 7 over 2, which is 3.5. On the other one, subtract 7, subtract 7, we get 2x is equal to a negative 7. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to a negative 3.5. So we find our solutions to be 3.5 comma 0 and negative 3.5 comma 0. Those are our x-intercepts, so those are going to show up on our x-axis over here. Now, let's see if we have enough to graph this thing. So when we come over here, what we know, we know that our vertex is at 0, negative 49. So 0, negative 49 would be like right about there. And of course, we have our axis of symmetry floating right there. Now, the other thing we knew is we knew our points over here. This is why we like to write these as points. 3.5 comma 0, 3.5 would be right there. And then negative 3.5 comma 0 would be right there. Now, we do know this is a parabola. So if you give me anything that looks like this, you're not going to be getting the points correct on that. Instead, you need to come over there and kind of make this look not like that. I always struggle with the left one. Like a parabola should. It should have some roundness to it. Hit those points, and we're pretty happy. Now, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to leave the rest for you. This really does require practice, but I hope that you have two good examples in front of you that you can follow. If you're struggling with this in any way, shape, or form, remember, reach out to me. We can do more problems or work on these together to figure out what we need to. Thank you guys so much for watching the full video. If you have any questions, as always, just reach out. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.